Have you ever pondered the concept of perfection in theology? Perfection, a state of being free from any flaw or defect, is a term that often boggles the human mind. When we apply this concept to theology, it becomes even more profound. Picture this, a divine entity, an epitome of perfection. This is the essence of perfect being theology, where we perceive the divine is perfect. Now let's consider the perfection of Jesus Christ and God the Father. The scriptures point out that Jesus was perfect, an embodiment of divine truth and righteousness. His perfection means that we can trust that God ever tells the truth. His perfection enabled him to conquer sin, to offer salvation to mankind. His perfection means that you and I and all our human imperfections can be counted righteous before God the Father. This idea of divine perfection is a cornerstone in our faith. The Word of God is the only perfect truth. Let's delve into the scripture to understand this concept better. Let's start at the beginning, in Genesis 17. 1. God said to Abraham, I am the Almighty God, walk before me, and be thou perfect. Now what does this verse tell us? It shows us the standard God set for Abraham, which is nothing less than perfection. Why? Because God himself is perfect. His very nature is the epitome of perfection and he calls us to emulate this. Now let's transition to Psalm 1830. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. This verse echoes the same sentiment. It reiterates the perfection of God and his ways. It assures us that his word is tried and true and he is a shield to those who put their trust in him. These verses clearly underline one fundamental truth. God's perfection is emphasized in these verses. Now let's turn our attention to the New Testament and the perfection of Jesus Christ. The concept of perfection is paramount to our understanding of God and his son Jesus. It's a theme that resonates throughout the Bible, and it's one that Matthew highlights in his gospel. Consider Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. This verse encourages us, as believers, to strive for perfection, to emulate the perfection of our Heavenly Father. It's a call to action, a reminder of the high standards that God sets for us, and the potential He created in each of us. But the perfection we are called to emulate is not just that of God the Father, it's also found in the life of Jesus Christ, as depicted in the New Testament. The Apostle Peter writes in his first letter, chapter 2, verse 22, Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. This verse illuminates the sinless life of Jesus, a life of absolute perfection, free from deceit or falsehood. This theme is echoed in the first letter of John, chapter 3, verse 5, And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Here John reiterates the sinless nature of Jesus, emphasizing his desire to eradicate sin from our lives. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 15, we find a further testament to Jesus' perfection. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. This verse reinforces the divine perfection of Jesus, despite his human experiences and temptations. These verses underscore the perfection of Jesus Christ. They remind us of the flawless life he led, the divine example he set, and the absolute truth of God's word. Because Jesus was perfect, we can trust that God tells the truth. Because Jesus was perfect, he could defeat sin. Because Jesus was perfect, you and I can be counted righteous. Let's continue with 2 Corinthians 5.21 and Isaiah 64.6. In 2 Corinthians, we see Paul's profound words, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. This verse is a testament to the perfection of Jesus Christ. He was made to be sin for us, even though he himself knew no sin. His perfection made it possible for us to be considered righteous in the eyes of God. Now let's shift our attention to Isaiah 64, 6. The prophet Isaiah says, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. Here, Isaiah is giving us a humbling reminder of our human condition. Our attempts at righteousness, when compared to the perfection of God, are like filthy rags. And this is why we need to accept the free gift of salvation by grace, through faith. Through these verses, we see the perfection of Jesus Christ and the blessed salvation that we can have through Him. So, what have we learned about the perfection of Jesus Christ and God? We've journeyed through Scripture, highlighting their flawless nature, witnessed through Genesis, Psalms, Matthew, Peter, John, Hebrews, Corinthians, and Isaiah, we see the impeccable truth, God's unwavering honesty, and Christ's victory over sin. 
their perfection a beacon, guiding us toward righteousness. As we conclude, let us remember that the understanding of their perfection isn't just theological knowledge, but a personal and transformative revelation. May this understanding of their perfection be a source of comfort and inspiration in your daily walk with Christ.